Hello everyone, and welcome back to Mabinogi. And you can see Tylak is back. And we get to do the part of this quest line that I hate a lot. So, I mean, this is... Tell Tylak what's been happening and what Murrow said. What? The Lea Fail is the key that can revive Macha. And this is the past that will lead you to where the Lea Fail is? Tylak carefully studies the past. I don't think you can use this past in its current state. In order for this past to work as it should, we need to restore the damaged parts. We need some restoration magic. It's not something we can do right now. It's going to take some time. Leave it to me. Anyway, it leads you to where Leah Fail is. I'm sure there will be powerful Femoras guarding the area. It might be more dangerous than you think. By any chance, have you heard about the Anti-Femor Robe, Serene? Anti-Femor Robe is a robe used to fight against the Femors. Blocks the evil powers of Femors from Mimbolic, which in turn makes whoever wears the robe be to become unrecognizable to them. Eh, sorry. If you use it, you may be able to search the area more safely. <gasps> Why don't you try making one? However, if you get too close to them or make a loud noise, eh, the Femores will be able to sense you. Be careful not to rely too much on the robe's power. Captain of the guards at M.A. Macho said to know a lot about the cloak. I believe you take this anti femor cloth to him. He should be able to get you to the robe easily. How will you prepare the cloak? I will prepare the pass so that it will work. I write down the materials on the quest scroll. All right, and I have more cloth and berry dungeon pass to another world. So off to see Aoden because we're female, or Ivan, or Ivan, or if you are male. Once again, female. So you know. I go to Aodin here. And then... Uh, it looks like we go back and forth between Aodin and Tarlac for a bit. <laughs> Based off of what I'm seeing here. Making the anti femor robe. I hate this part so much. This part is easy. If you have the support puppet. It's basically impossible if you don't. <laughs> One anti for more rope. Oh, you even brought the materials. It usually takes some time to make this, but what is it? Really? Tell Aiden the plan to make your way to Leah Fail. What? <laughs> so serene. I think you forgot about the favor I asked of you. It isn't like I don't know who you are. It's just that, like I told you before, I think you have a bit of rec a reckless side to you. I am charged with the safety and security of this town. I know you're an adventurer through and through, but I can't condone your carrying on with this without some preparation. Whoops. I clicked, clicked over that. I'll give you the anti for more robe afterwards. This is the last time we're talking about this. Um, drat. It didn't tell, it didn't uh, go back and tell me what he said. Well. I guess you'll just have to pause that for a split second right there. I clicked and my mouse double clicked on accident, so sorry about that. I'm sure Tarlac will um, have something to say. That's the reason, like he'll probably recap whatever it was that Aodin said, so uh, I guess we'll find out when we go back to talk to Tarlac. I'm still always weirded out by this new structure. This thing in the background here was just added recently. So, uh, sorry. Hello, oh, Tarlac. We're back earlier than I thought. Fortunately, I can't use the pastures yet, but did you get the robe by chance? Tell Tarlac what Aiden told you. Hmm. The head of security in M.A. Marching to say such things. He's usually not one to stop an adventurer like you from doing things. I have a feeling this is... Hmm. Never mind. I think it's something I should say. The reason I am making this dangerous request is... I truly believe that you are a special chosen one who has the blessings of the goddess Enneo. 
someone who's a different being than we are. Tyler seems to be thinking about something. Well then, let's do this. I'll give you a book. Give you a book from Tyler. Oh, I know what this book is. It's a compilation of a book that I wrote of the new adventures that have new adventures that have appeared in this world. It's a book I wrote on adventures like you. I started writing this to see and list out the difference between two author de down and like us and militians like you. I think if you give this book to Aiden, then he, I think he'll like think diff I think he'll think differently about you heading into dangerous areas. Actually, I think you should read this too. So we can get yourself the anti for more rope. I'll get things ready too. Aw yeah. This is that book that I was talking about. This book explains basically everything about what a militian actually is. Which is kinda neat. Um Thank you. I don't know why I was stuck in the moon gate. Let's see. Probably my special inventory. Yes it is. There's the uh, Bari Dungeon Pass that we need to go to Leofail. Um, but this one is the book that Twilight wrote about militians and what they are. So, <coughs> this book is a collection of data I have gathered over some time, especially from stories told by the Knight of Light, who has, incidentally, returned to Eren most recently. It has, it has no more than a personal collection of hypothetical theories, but perhaps it will be useful to those who read this. Hmm. I had a cough drop in my mouth, and it kind of like got stuck to the top of my mouth after it, like tore apart. Um, perhaps it'll be useful though to read this. It is my deepest wish that the theories recorded here will one day be tested for its legitimacy. What is a militia? Largest population group inhabiting Erin as of late are the militians, who are immigrants from another unknown world. The word militia literally means from the stars. And I must say, the term is quite appropriate for a population that has no known origin. These militians are much different from our people, Tuatha Dé Danans, descendants of Danu. According to legend, our people, Tuatha Dé Danans, did not originate from Aran either. It is not really all that strange for a new ethnic group to migrate to Aran after all. We are very different overall though, and are def definitely of a different ethnic group. One of the most significant character traits of the militians is a rapid growth and ability to be reborn. Most militians appear in Aaron at a very young age, but they grow unbelievably fast and often reappear as youths not long after they had turned into adults. Thanks for that game, for putting that right there. Militians call this their rebirth. When they are reborn, they do not just turn younger. Their gender might change too. They say that this has to do with the fact that their spirit continues to live on, only taking on a new body and rebirth. <clears throat> These militians claim that an entity called Neo enables them to do this. I'll discuss more about Neo later. The other unique characteristic of the militians is that they do not experience death, ever. This is quite shocking, especially when you consider just how many Tuatha Dé Danans had died during battles against the Fomors. The majority of militians are known as adventurers and has said that there has been no known record of a militian who has died, at least of those that lived in Aaron. They say the reason that we sometimes cease to see particular militians is not because they are dead, but that they migrate to other worlds. The fact that they can survive without death despite their dangerous lifestyles as adventurers, I think, makes them that much more reckless and strong. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's the, uh, militants are reckless because they can't die. <laughs> As of late, I have, for personal reasons, been spending more time with militants than I have been with other two author de Donans. As I watched them age with such rapidity, I at first thought our differences were merely a difference in our ethnic character. Eventually, though, I discovered that there was a more fundamental difference between them and us. And that difference being our perceptions of time. According to the Knight of Light, who is a militia himself, several decades have passed since the militians have first arrived in Aaron. But to my knowledge, from the perspective of Tuatha Dé Danann, militians arrived in Aaron no more than a 
few years back. Where does this difference of perception come from? And how is it that what feels like a few years to us is perceived as decades to them? Is it that they follow a different calendar than we do? No, actually it turns out that they use the exact calendar that we do. So then what is causing such a rift in our perception? As I pondered on, I started to sense that there was something very wrong. More questions. During my investigations, I've found many things that are strange about militians. One of them being that Neo, who seems so familiar to the militians, has never been seen by any Tuatha Di Danan. Another strange thing is that militians often complain that Tuatha Di Danans do not recognize them and claim that we had, the, had met them a number of times previously. And there you go, the, uh, the, like, all the characters going, Hi, I am as such and such. Oh, we all we've met before. I don't remember that. According to the militians, Neo had led them to Aaron, and it is Neo who continues to help them throughout their time in Aaron. But surprisingly enough, they claim that Aaron, that Neo was once a human from Aaron. It's hard to say just how Neo had acquired her powers, but it is my guess that it is the reason we are not able to see her. Simply put, Neo exists in a different world dimension. That's probably why only militians who are connected to that particular dimension are able to see her. Accordingly, they say that two of the Didanans can see Neo if the spirit potion, which brings about magic powers of their other worlds, is taken. On the other hand, the fact that two of the Didanans do not recognize militians time and time again seems suspicious. According to the Knight of Light and other militians, this occurs across the board amongst all two of the Didanans of Aaron. If that is the case, it is unlikely then that this is happening as a result of mere forgetfulness. Perhaps our differences in the perception of time and such disappearing memory share, at its basis, the same explanation? There is no way to explain why such occurrences take place, so never mind why. But when you think about memory and time as related phenomenon, a single explanation is reached. It's perhaps that time has indeed passed, as militians claim, and that because of our, to us the Dedanans, that is, loss of memory, we are unable to know that. Certainly seems like a plausible yet shocking explanation, doesn't it? However, if time has had really passed as such, how does one explain that we have not aged in all that time? Actually, perhaps as a matter of point of view. From our pers perspectives, militians are living in days if they are living through a month. The scene from the other side, we probably appear as if we are forgetting all about the passage of time, which in turn keeps us from getting old. The problem then is to ask, who is right? If we have indeed been living in the same timeline, without any gaps in between, it's probably more believable to trust the words of those who, in fact, remember everything. It's hard to believe, but I think that chances are, the militants are right. That, of course, is a shocking suggestion for us two author Didanans, even if there is no evidence to prove that in the present. Including remarks, based on all the different characteristics we have discussed here, we can no longer say that militants are merely a different ethnic group from that of the two author Didanans. They can endlessly be reborn, are aggressive fighters, and can repeatedly appear and reappear in different forms. They are, in some ways, very similar to Aaron's animals, perhaps even similar to Femores in some ways. It is unfair to compare the righteous militians to the evil Femores, I know. But one thing is for sure, for now they are much more a much more superior group to us, and so it is imperative that we request their help in our battles against the Femores. We'll also have to figure out the differences between militians and Tuatha Di Danans so that we can better understand all the various events that are taking place between us as a result. We'll have to collect more data and further study for the various cases in order to have a better understanding. There you go. You're back. Hand it over to our journal to Aiden. If this is the solution, how you come back safely that I asked you about? <coughs> That's what he asked, okay. Records about militians. Aiden carefully reads the book. It's an interesting book. However, I knew you were from another world, but I don't know why you would bring me this book. Are you trying to prove to me through this book that since you're from another world, you won't die? I don't know what to think of you. In the end, you're trying to tell me that you're different from me, right? I got it. I guess I can't stop you from going. Here's the anti more robe. Saved anti more robe. Yay! I do love that they have an explanation for, like, why does nobody remember you? You know, why is it that, like, all these things happen? It's like, 
It's been years since we came. Decades even. I mean, look at it. You know, look at the look at the advancement in time. It's currently 450, you know. But they don't see it that way. To them only a few years have passed. For us militians though, we see this version of time. The in you know in-game version of time. <coughs> Whereas they don't see that. So it's like, uh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> there's a lot of time passing that you just don't know of. How's everything going so far? I see. You obtained the anti femora rope. Passage ready as well. You just need to complete the quest. Let me warn you once more the anti femora rope does not make you stronger, it simply makes you unnoticeable in certain situations. Serene, I don't know what's going on in your personal life, but destroying the Leofail is the most important thing right now. I beg you, please find the Leofail and destroy it. Aaron's future is in your hands. Infiltration Pass. Pass that leads to the Leofail. This is made possible by Tylak doing some work on Mark's Pass. Use this at Bale Dungeon. That's right, Bale Dungeon. That is why we have that pass to take us to the other world. Because first we have to actually travel to the another world of Bangor. And then from there, once we're in the another world of Bangor, we can then turn around and use that at the Baal dungeon. So. That said, well, I mean, this is it, basically. This is the part that I hate. <laughs> I really do. I, I hate this. I, I hate this part. This is the single worst part. Maybe not the single worst part. Um, there's technically another part to this that's kind of just as ridiculous. So, there it is. There's the anti femor robe. I need to wear it yet. Because we're not in that yet. First, we have to go through Berry Dungeon again. Once we get through Berry Dungeon, then, once we're uh, in the other world, we can continue from there. Let me go ahead and grab my puppet here. And I don't want to activate it immediately just because I don't know if there's going to be any orb things here. Um, and I don't want to use up any of this puppet's abilities yet like it only gets two hours and while i'm can almost guarantee that we'll get through this in just the two hours i don't want to take any chances <laughs> okay call it ridiculous if you want that's like it's two hours serene you're obviously gonna be like through it in two hours still I don't want to take any chances that something's going to happen that's going to end up making me not able to use the puppet while I'm down there, so. And I will show you guys the version of the dungeon without the puppet. Just so you guys can see, you know, you, you'll know just how ridiculous the dungeon actually is. And I'm not just pulling your leg saying, this is ridiculous. It actually is ridiculous. And you will see that. <laughs> At least that's what I'm hoping is that you'll see it. And that you won't watch it, see how hard it is and go, nah, that's not even a challenge, you know. But I am going to try to do it legitimately the first time. And we'll see how it goes. So, it will probably be the next episode. As we do still have to get through here. Um, but still. We'll do what we can. Just gotta make my way around here. Through this place. Gotta go through the door. Why am I... Why don't I have this out? Why don't I use Leah? To get around a little bit faster. I don't have March Song yet. Why they just march song? I also don't have spinning slasher. Alright, I can just windmill. I forget. 
to just windmill. Kappa Guild was formed. Guild leader Pineapple. It is not a target nearby. Cool. I wish that the puppet told me where the real chests were as well, but it does not, unfortunately. It only tells me where the real orb is. Just trying to use as little Dorcha as possible. I can build some up, although I think I'm at the max now, so I might actually want to start using my door trip, because I can't even, like, raise it any further. Hey, I could actually harvest song stuff here. Bam. I don't need to kill these guys. But I might as well just for the extra, like, skill experience. But, yeah, I have harvest song now. I can actually use it to make this a little bit... get, uh, the, uh, the... Or faster if I, you know, actually wanted to collect ore. I knew that one was a fake. Hiccups all of a sudden. There's not a target nearby. That is the real one then. Neat. Whoops. I'm on the wrong hotbar. Come on, use the skills, please. Thank you. <laughs> and gotta find the real one. Oh, okay, first one I picked was the real one. How about that? Dungeon room key. And yeah, that's it. That is it for this dungeon. There's this door, and then the boss door. Go ahead and just get a little bit more Dorcha here. Max, might as well max, just max it out before I go into the boss room. There we go. I was already maxed out technically, but I didn't care. Oh, it's just wisps. It's not even hard. And a flying sword, apparently. I, I gotta remind myself that this one, this dungeon, is actually like easy. I don't need to like worry about it being difficult. Like they made this part easy because the next part is so ridiculously hard. So, there it goes. And through the door we go. Infiltration pass. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this on. I actually don't need the hood up to make it work, so... <laughs> I still have time in the episode! Well... Guess we'll do it this episode and call it... Or try to do it this episode and probably fail. Almost guaranteed I'm gonna fail this. Uh, like, seriously, almost guaranteed. I think... Hang on, before I do... Before I do show you guys this the real way... Um, let me double check. Uh, do 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 do. And, uh, can only be done solo. Not to pass on Bale Dungeon. Um, causes when you're equipped on equip. I am not seeing. I can automatically expel your dungeon. You'll also win. Okay. Good, good, good. The advice to unequip before performing this dungeon. Oh, yes, that's right. Because there, there's no point in armor here. That That's true. They, they are actually right on that. So let me do that. Let me go ahead and unequip my armor. And I will even unequip my puppet. Just so that you guys can see that I'm not using it. I'm not going to unequip my chain blade though. Because I might actually need the chain blade. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and unequip the armor. All I've got on, as you can see, the anti femor robe. Um, and the chain blade. And it looks like if I fail, I automatically get a new pass. So that's good. 
There's Tiana. Tiana. Are you aware of it? <coughs> yes. I heard it's a very painful thing to go through. Aren't you scared? I am, but... Then stop it right now. You don't need to go through this. Uh, Rory, this is my destiny. I have been chosen to go through that path ever since the day I was born. Triana! I know this is going to be a painful, painful experience. I will be consumed by, other, by the other being that has been inside me all this time. I may even look totally different after this. But, even when I am in pain, I never blame it on anyone else. All that blaming and hating doesn't make my pain go away, you know. Feeling of love, pain, and suffering, they're all just feelings that let me know that I am alive and well. If I am in a place where I am all alone, then I wouldn't be able to feel any of those emotions. Love, pain, suffering, suffering, happiness, all that. If I don't feel any of those, then will I ever feel like I am alive? If it's my destiny, my fate, then I just accept it. No questions asked. No, it's not right. You can't, you can't, you can't possibly withstand it all like that. Hurry. Triana, you are asking me about my father, right? My father was the lord of the town. He was placed there after his efforts in the Meg Twirad War. But after a while, he started acting like I wasn't even around. <coughs> I was coming up with different ways to please my father, but all he did was smile weakly at me. He never said anything to me. I only heard of a story that I have a fate that has already been set in stone. I didn't even get to hear that from my father. Seriously, what kind of destiny am I placed in? I didn't care about the position of the Lord. I never wanted one. I only wanted to be accepted by my father. That's all. Hurry. That's when I made my decision. That my destiny is something my father dearly fears. It's up to me to beat that. It's how I have fixed my life since. Me, making my own decisions. Being the boss of my life. Although I was unable to be at his side when he passed away, I have no regrets. Fate, destiny, it's all a lie. It's meant to be fought against and to overcome, even if that means losing your identity, your friends, and your family. I still have... Ah, uh, what am I saying? Don't worry about it, Rory. I'm alright. Triona. Well then? I want to be the lady of Rory's life. I want to be in Rory's arms. Even if I become someone that I am not. <coughs> Here we go. Here we go. This probably won't take long for me to die, let's be honest. So, here's Bail Dungeon. You'll see that there is just a one floor. So, you know, a very short dungeon, right? Not too hard, right? Right? I, I, I actually have to remove that. Because otherwise, something bad will happen here. Okay. Okay. Good first, uh, good first shot there. Good, good, okay. I got to that room without a problem. So, the way this works, the anti-femore robe, as long as I don't get close to these guys, they don't see me. And you think, oh, well, doesn't that make that easy? Well, <laughs> it would <laughs> if it worked on everything in the dungeon. <laughs> it, it does not. It, it does not work on everything in the dungeon. Ah! 
It also doesn't work if I get too close. Hey, not bad. And there are... So there's four orbs in each room, as you can see. Three orbs are fake, one is real. <clears throat> two or two of the fake orbs spawn in the skeletons. One of them spawns in something much, much worse. And actually, it has the exact opposite effect. <clears throat> the creature that summons in cannot see you if you do not have the Femora ro robe on. So if I were to see the creature, I could take the Femora robe off, it wouldn't see me. Problem is that that means that then the guard skeletons can see you. So, not fun. Ah, hi. Guard gargoyles. They don't see me, though. Oh, frick. Oh, frick, oh, frick, oh, frick. Oh, frick, oh, frick. That's the, that's the thing. That's the thing right there. Right there. That's the thing. That is absolutely the thing. Can I come in? Nope, I'm gonna get seen by those guys. Oh frick, I'm dead. I am dead. I'm going to die now. Because the gargoyles have seen me. <laughs> no experience death. Yep. Failed to enter the dungeon. I have experienced death. <sighs> yep. That's how that goes. So, that wasn't the best example, I guess, just because of the fact that the, uh, the gargoyle also saw me. Um, I probably should have kept the Femor robe on when I attacked the Hellhound. Also, there's this. Like, I legitimately need health. It does not give me enough health. Uh, view skills, actually. It does not heal me. And so you have to sit here and, like, try to heal yourself up. Which, if you're like me, when I did this the first time, I had no pets. And I didn't carry potions, like I'm not carrying any potions now. Granted, that is my own fault for not carrying potions. Why do I bother clicking on that one? That's completely pointless. <coughs> but, so those skeleton hellhounds can see you. If you have the Femora robe on. And so you have to kill them. But then if you attack anything, your Femora robe basically deactivates. Making you able to be attacked by anything. Um, so you have to take the Femora robe off and put it back on. In order to, you know, continue to progress. And if even like one of these guys sees you you're basically dead because as soon as one sees you it auto aggros the entire room guaranteed like literally will aggro the entire room as soon as anything but the hellhound sees you now what I was trying to do was pull the hellhound out of the room so that I could hopefully fight it without anything else seeing me and then go from there. Ah, frick. Yep. <laughs> Problem is, if the Hellhound sees you while you're in the room, he aggros literally everything in the freaking room. And here's the death. So you can see why I say this dungeon is ridiculous and nigh impossible. 
Now you could say, well, you're not using your armor. That's because the armor is not going to help me in this dungeon. If I die, I just lose my armor, basically. And that's not fun. As, see, so let's say I had hit those two orbs. Then that thing would have spawned in. Did you see how many there were a couple rooms ago? Also, here comes the biggest issue. These two rooms are connected. I can't bring the Hellhound out of this room. So I have to either get the Hellhound first or not get the Hellhound. Because otherwise, I'm dead. Okay, right, get the Hellhound first. And considering... Ow. Considering that it is 110% RNG... Which orb is which? There's no way to memorize which orb is going to be the orb that unlocks these guys. I and mean, look at how many spiders there are! There's five! And now two gargoyles. And a hellhound. If I hadn't killed the hellhound already. Now, imagine... Both of these rooms now aggro because I get a hellhound in this room. Oh god. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Yay. I, I hate to say yay about getting nothing, but I got nothing. Yay. Can I make some like healing potions right now? I have bloody herbs. Um, I can make some HP 50s. Also, potions are kind of useless. Because you can end up getting, um, potion sickness. Which basically screws you over royally. To the point of literally knocking down entire stats down to zero. Like, if I get potion sickness, I could end up with zero dex, zero intelligence, zero will, zero strength. Any of these can become just zero. And as your dexterity factors into your defense, a zero on your dexterity means you're dead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Physical damage you take, your defense is affected by your strength. Oh, your defense is affected by your strength. That's interesting. Um, higher the protection, the lower the chances of taking critical physical attacks. Uh, magic defense is will. That's interesting. Usually defense is factored by dex. Defense penetration allows you to bypass your enemy's defense by some amount of physical attacks. That's affected by your dex. So this can go straight down to zero. And so then you have no armor pierce, which then of course means that you're dead. Um, because you can't hurt them, basically. And so those were 250 potions, and that barely gave me anything. <laughs> uh, because I have 757 health here. And I hate that your heal spell here uses your stamina if you're healing yourself. Like you can see I look down here, my stamina is tanking. On top of that, I'm only getting what? 12, 8, 10, 7, 10? I hate it. I hate the healing in this game. It sucks. It really does. <sighs> At least we don't have to worry about them. So this is the last time I'm going to attempt this legitimately. Oh, hi. At least I got it early. Oh, frick. Again, I'm not wearing the armor just because... First off, if I get attacked by the Hellhounds, my armor not going to help any. Because my armor has defense and protection. That does nothing for these magic attacks. That's magic defense. So it will do nothing for me. Fighting these the hellhounds. At all. Glad that I got the hellhound first. Really glad I got the hellhound first. <laughs> oh, that was bad. It didn't see me, but I walked right through that spider. You can see how much more of the stunchion I have left. <clears throat> and I'm already basically dead. This dungeon is impossible 
without knowing where the correct orb is or just being stupidly lucky. <laughs> now the nice thing is that every room is an orb. So I don't have to go looking for keys. No bad part is every room is an orb. And there are rooms connected to rooms. If I get that hellhound now, I'm just, th this is it. Okay. <laughs> you can see how pessimistic I'm being, but that's because literally, look at those spiders. And they're all my current level. In fact, one of them's a strong. One of those spiders is strong. I would have to fight all of them plus the hellhound if the hellhound sees me. So, yeah. Uh, is that many enemies at my level? And this is a solo dungeon only? That's not going to happen. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to be much higher level for this. And I will note... Excuse me, sorry. Right now, I am cumulative level 546. And this dungeon is designed to be done by somebody that's not even level 150 yet. Or maybe about level 150. Nah. I think it's meant to be done around about level 150. Also, there's the death. Also keep in mind that I'm using the chain slash, which is super, super fast. And I just lost because of a hellhound. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do this dungeon. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do this the cheese way. Now you say, well, what's the cheese way? Well, I think you've seen it already because you've seen me do other dungeons with this puppet. But, to activate the function, let's... Okay, the shield is deactivated. Okay. So now I have my flying support puppet. I'm just going to, like, this, this is already 42 minutes, but I'm just going to finish this dungeon in this. So now we come in here. Oh, I saw it. I think it was this one. This one. So my support puppet tells me exactly which one is real. Which means I don't have to worry about summoning anything at all throughout the whole dungeon. Yay! You say, well, where's the challenge in that? I say, where's the challenge in literally random RNG? I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> RNG does not make challenge. RNG is RNG. RNG is luck. <laughs> I live. I kid you not. The last time I did this, and I'll admit, last time I did this, I wasn't even level 500 yet. You know, I did a lot and leveled up a lot before I came here. Um, I was nowhere near this level. I definitely didn't have Chain Slash when I did this last time. Which make, does, in fact, make this dungeon a lot easier. Um, but, that said... Um, last time I came here, I died. Ten times. And I raged. To my guild, Amavi here. I raged to my guild about it. And I was like, I hate it because I can't get help or anything, you know. They're like, well, you know, you just got to keep trying. That's what they said. At, yeah, that's what they said. Um, yeah, the, I should say that's what the people that were online at that time said. And so I did. I came back and I tried it again another at least five times and it was like I can't do this I this is impossible um, and it was like the it, it was just that it was like no there is absolutely no way to get through this um, without the support puppet so you know which one is the real orb. There, 
it is supposedly some degree to which you can predict which orb will open the door without the puppet. But I've never seen it. It's something about like... Here, let me... Let me, uh... I can read it right here from the, uh, the wiki. Um... If I can find it. Um... Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, da -da 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 -da. Four marbles or pillars set at the four corners of the room along with the rock locked doors. If a key one of the marbles will open when you hit it, hitting the wrong marble opens spawns mar monsters. The lead marbles will permanently light up when hit while areas will sink into the ground. Correct marble rotates clockwise after 10 seconds. Monsters will not spawn when a marble is hit after the door opens. Sometimes a monster will try to chest key. So apparently, the real one will rotate after 10 seconds, which I have never seen that happen. Like, okay, so this is the real one, right? So let's wait 10 seconds, because we know this is the real one. Let's, let, let's see it rotate. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's not rotating. Or if it is, it's like this part. And I don't see that rotating at all. I don't even know how you would see it rotate. But this is the right one. So therefore, it's the one that should be rotating every ten seconds. But it doesn't. It does not rotate. Or if it does, I don't see it rotate. Maybe one of you saw it rotate in this entire time, but I have not seen it rotate. <coughs> so, that's supposedly the way of knowing whether it's the real one or not. Is that the real one will rotate. Correct marble rotates clockwise every 10 seconds. That's what it says. On the wiki. It's not what I'm seeing. Not seeing any rotating going on. I see the sparkling. The sparkling is because of the puppet. I don't see any rotating going on. And trust me, I tried using that method when I did this the first few times. Like, after I got frustrated the first few times, I was like, there's got to be some way of knowing which is the real one. I looked it up on the wiki. It's like, one of them rotates after 10 seconds. So I, like, I, you know, I got up to him. I, like, looked at it like this, you know. I could zoom the camera away the frickin'. I'm looking at it like, it rotates, it rotates, it rotates. It doesn't rotate. <laughs> if it rotates, I have never seen it rotate. <clears throat> ever but now after finally after like failing this 20 or more times I lost track honestly uh, my guild leader Toka Tokachi was on and she was just like oh you're doing that dungeon I'm like yeah I'm doing this dungeon and it's freaking impossible because there's absolutely just no way to know which is the real one and she's like, yeah, no, there isn't. You just kind of got to try. And then she handed me this. And she's like, just walk into the dungeon, equip that, turn on the function. Just make sure you're only using the function when you're in the dungeon. I was like, okay. So I walk in the dungeon, and I see the function, turn on the function, and I see the sparkles. I was like, oh... Then I was happy because I could finally know where I needed to go. Like, okay, so this is the last one, right? We know this is the real one. Let's say that, you know, because I was back here behind the wall. So maybe, maybe having the function on. You know, maybe that prevents it from rotating. You know, maybe something else. Also, I'm pretty sure I turned the function off. Oh, that's interesting. It's still sparkling, even though I deactivated the function. It doesn't rotate. It rotates clockwise. Which is this way. 
Unless it's just the orb part that rotates. In which case, how do you see that? It looks the same from all directions. I don't see any way that you would even see it rotating. If it's just this part of it, you know? I don't know. I've never figured out how you're supposed to legitimately do that. Oh, hey, my rub's gone. <laughs> uh, hi? Who? Oh, nobody has snuck in. Ha ha ha. Are you also looking for Leah Fail? You must be wanting to to stop the summoning of Krom Kruich. But it's all for naught, Paladin. The only thing you destroyed was the barrier that protects the dragon. It wasn't Leofail. Take that Paladin away. I'll do the questioning myself. Ow. I'm getting beat up here. Hey, Crystal! You... You, the ultimate traitor of the Fomors. It's been a while, Morgant. This is someone that's very important to Niren. I'll take this person myself. Second time already. Not someone I can just go easy on. Eh, <laughs> eh, you have experienced death. You have survived an attack of 500 damage or more. Uh, Krom Kruich is a name that referred to the dragon statue located in the room where the fake Leofail was. Better talk to Crystal and others about this. I should uh, put on my armor so that I'm not naked. <laughs> and I don't need this puppet. Because we're good. Alright, well. Now that you've seen that dungeon and... Uh, I, yes, I only ran it twice because I was pretty sure you guys didn't want to see just how aggravating that dungeon can be to do it more than just the two times. Um, because, like, it's it's just impossible. It really is. If, if somebody can show me themselves doing that dungeon without a support puppet or anything, please put it in the comments down below. I would absolutely love to see that and I, not just doing the dungeon first try like that same cutscene and everything get it first try if you can do it first try I will be impressed now if you can't get it first try that's not a surprise because it's an impossible dungeon but if you can get through it without needing a puppet I would genuinely be interested in seeing that video because I want to understand how to do that dungeon without the puppet. But seriously, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's impossible because it just requires just the right RNG. So, and and don't be level freaking like five thousand going into that dungeon or something. I mean. Because that is possible now with Blainid. You could literally be like cumulative level 5,000 um, before even doing Gen 1 because of Blainid. So don't be like ridiculously overpowered when you go in there or anything like. Seriously, I'm talking beginner character, no higher than level 600 doing that dungeon. And you know, show me you getting through that legitimately. With this, you know, level like 600 at most, without a puppet, I want to see it. I want to understand how that dungeon works. But I've never understood how that dungeon works, so. That said, I do hope you've enjoyed. If you have, feel free to subscribe. Check the video description down below for a link to the playlist. That way you can get caught up on any of the episodes that you might have missed. And with that, and that uh, Spirit of Order skill training, I will see you guys next time. See you later.